Hey everybody, so this is our Queen Castle setup. I just put some frames in here for the first time this season, uh, but two of the sides are open. I'm gonna show you how this whole thing works. Shout out to uh, member, MCBA member, Greg Lobko. He's actually who I got this Queen Castle from a year or two ago, and I've had really good success. So here's the basic principle. So this is a 10 frame medium box. I use all medium supers. It's 10 frame medium, you can get it in, in deep, I'm sure too. Uh, that's broken into three chambers that each have three frame, space for three frames. There's inner cover on top, divided into three places. Each one has a feeder. What's nice, these feeders, the uh, lids are recessed, so you don't need to worry about a shim when you use the quart jars. So I've got one, I've got one blank frame in each of these just uh, ready to go for when the time comes. But as you can see here, you've got an entrance on opposite sides. So this entrance is closed up. Top entrance is closed up. I have these girls in, they're locked in for 24, 48 hours. That's why they get acclimated. There's a queen cell in here. Um, the middle chamber, the uh, opposite side has the entrance. And then the left side, it's on the front. So, you know, three chambers, opposite sides, works out really nicely. Um, you could make one of these at home pretty easily by just putting in a little quarter inch plywood divider. I think a lot of us could do that relatively easily, or you can obviously buy these things. Um, so yeah, three frames will go in these. I usually will put one frame of capped brood one frame with nectar and pollen and one empty frame so they've got something to do and then the queen has somewhere to lay I go ahead and put another box on top and just the standard you know all right so what is the benefit of using the queen castle so in the past, I have used those miniature nukes, the little styrofoam nukes. Um, I, I had pretty decent success with them. If you want to check out anything on the mini nukes, uh, Dr. Vince Aloyo, he gave me, he sent me to Guelph University. They got a wealth of information on YouTube and on their website. Guelph does these mini nukes. They give you a ton of great advice on, on how to use them. Go for it. I don't use them anymore. I just use this Queen Castle. Um, here are the benefits. Mini nukes, uh, they're just these tiny little frames. Can't really do much with them. This one, I'm using my regular frame. So if I have an extra a frame that has a queen cell on it, uh, I do it with swarm cells. If I bring that over with some bees and have them raise the queen cell themselves, it's like taking a little mini split. You know, you're only really taking two frames from that original hive and then one blank frame. Um, the other really good thing is, is once the queen gets mated, she still has some space to lay and it buys you time. I've, when I, I've had queens that got mated successfully and were in here, you know, they're acting as this little three frame nuke basically. Um, and I'll actually take frames and replace them with blank frames and feed other hives with it, almost using it as a resource nuke um, and just buying time. You don't have to worry too much about them absconding from not having enough space i had that issue a little bit with the mini nukes um i also i can take three frames once queen comes back and has made it i can take these free three frames up them super easily into a five frame nuke and then really shortly after that you can introduce that five frame nuke with newspaper method into a full frame hive no problem at all um i've even i've introduced the three frames with a mated queen on it via newspaper method in a hive no problem at all um, you can, uh, to introduce a queen, you can put a cage over her. So you would take the queen, cage her over top of capped brood that is about to emerge. And you can introduce her into a hive. The, the frame is going to, or the, excuse me, the screen is going to protect her from bees that haven't accepted her yet as her pheromones get to spread. And then the capped brood that she's with is going to emerge out and they're going to become her attendants. They're going to feed her. Um, etc. So you can introduce that way. You can obviously, you could cage the queen, put a couple workers in there, uh, 
and you could cage her and introduce her. But I really like taking these three frames, putting them in a new hive, um, and, and just, it's a really quick introduction, especially, I mean, only when you have a queenless hive. You never want to introduce a queen when there's a queen present or if there's any queen cells present. Make sure they're cleaned out, cleaned out super easy. Um, late July last year, I, uh, I made it a queen with using a queen cell, which you can absolutely do queen cell um, in here. I mated her and overwintered her in three 10 frame boxes, overwintered wonderfully. And that was like, I think she probably got mated August 1st. Three frames up to five, five, put them in 10, fed them all through September, October. Um, and that was one of my most booming hives coming out of winter. So it gives you a little bit more versatility. You can, you can exchange frames, like I said. Um, and you can have three going in just one 10 frame box. Uh, just always be doing B math, you know what I mean? You put a cell in here. I, I have notes on this cell I put in today. It looked like it was about one day from being capped. So you know that's like a day five, day six cell. That means I've got 10, 11 days before that virgin queen is gonna emerge. So I know, all right, I, I got it 10 days, 11 days, so I'm gonna check back. Um, and then you know, you know it's gonna take her another week or so to get mated. Um, and then you know that at most she can lay about one side of a frame of eggs per day. Um, there's not enough of a population. She's not going to lay a full half side. So, you know, on a full day, she might do a half a frame. So when you go in, you can see how much space they have and see, okay, she's going to have room to lay for X amount of days before you have to worry about them getting too crowded. Uh, but so constantly be doing your B math. I really like this. Um, when I move a cell over, Sometimes I'll take three, if take three frames, I'll put them in a, in a portable nuke box. I'll move them two miles to a friend's house, have them sit overnight. Um, I'll pick them up the next night, bring them back and put them right in here. And you don't have to worry about it. You move them two miles, they've reset their GPS. Um, I did not do that with this. I took all, mainly nurse bees. Um, I, I fed them, I taped them in so they can't go anywhere. Um, and I'm gonna have them sit for 24 hours, just, you know, in their new home. A bunch of bees are gonna emerge because I put ca capped brood in there that had bees emerging on it. So I know there's gonna be some births over the next day or two or some emergence over the next day or two. Um, and then I'm gonna open up one of these entrances. I'm gonna put something over top of it so that they can't just fly right out, that they hit a little bit of obstruction, which can trick their brains into redoing the GPS. And I'm not gonna worry about it. If you come back and you notice, oh my God, there's no bees, you know, bring in some nurse bees, give them a boost. Um, but not really a problem that I have if you're putting frames that don't have uh, brood on them and you're getting a lot of foragers, they may leave and never come back. So you wanna make sure you're getting the right right bees in. But all in all, I really had really great luck. I think, uh, I think last year I went, I had about 13 queens mated in these. Uh, the only issue that I had was once the dearth hit, this is a very popular spot for bees to come. It's almost like they remembered um, being in here at one point and they returned to their birthplace and uh, and they robbed out a little bit. So once the, the dearth hit in late July, uh, we had to close up shop on this a little bit. But, uh, but yeah, springtime into summer, this is just a really great way that I had to very success, very high success rate of uh, mating queens. Uh, and I don't do grafting or anything yet. I just, I don't have the time on my hands. So this is kind of a little quicker way of doing it. Hey, so um, it's April 12th. I, uh, I just got into a hive that had uh, swarm cells. And this is how I'm gonna utilize uh, swarm cells to get another queen going get another you know colony really going with the queen castle so uh this is the queen castle obviously i don't have anything in it right now it has two dividers so there's three different chambers that have hold three uh frames this is obviously mediums i've taped the entrance shut um and i'm going to be putting some syrup on so i've got a jar it's got these nice inner covers that uh have built-in jar spots so in the hive that I'm splitting, the way I split is I take, I move the queen. I leave a cell or two in the hive. Uh, yeah, that's how I split. I don't, you know, do, I don't take the swarm cells away. I take the queen away. Um, 
This hive had two beautiful swarm cells on two different frames uh, and it works out so great. So what I did is I left one of them in there. I took the queen, I moved her, I made a split. And then I took two more frames, one of them that has the swarm cell on it. Hope you can see. Ta-da, she's a beaut. Got a good amount of worker bees here, a lot of capped brood, you don't. So I'm gonna be putting this in the queen castle. You do not wanna put a frame that has a bunch of fresh eggs on it. Reason you don't wanna do that, and I'm gonna carefully put this, carefully put this in. Uh, but the reason you don't wanna put a frame with a bunch of um, fresh eggs is that that would re require all these nurse bees to use a lot of energy to give royal jelly. They need to feed them pollen. Um, they need to, you know, have bee bread made. And uh, you're gonna stress the hive out. But if you put a bunch of captive brood in, no big deal. They're gonna hatch out and they're, you're gonna have new bees. Um, highly recommend it. So what I'm doing is I got a frame with capped brood and obviously that swarm cell. I've got an empty frame already in here. So completely empty frame. In that opposite the queen cell and then i've got a frame with nectar and a frame a frame that has nectar and pollen on it um not a crazy amount of bees but again i got a full frame here that's gonna emerge very soon you want to be extremely careful know which frame has your cell nice and easy no big deal There we go, and I'm just gonna close them in here. I've already taped the entrance, so there's no place for them to get out. I'm gonna come back, fill this jar up with one-to-one -one syrup, and then Pretty simply, you got the shim that goes on top. Get these bees out of here. There's no entrance up here. There's no exit for them. Get on out of there, bees. There you go. All right. And then you got the lid. And I'm gonna wait. I, I mainly put nurse bees in here, so I'm not overly worried about these bees leaving and going back. Um, there's some foragers, but with all the nurse bees, we'll be good. And also all that brood that's about to emerge will be good. Uh, but I'm going to leave them tucked in here for at least till tomorrow. Um, I just want them to take care of the, their biz. And also, I, there's food on. So I know they got food. I know they have pollen. Um, let them get situated to their new house. And then I'll take this uh, tape off and I'll put something in front of this hole just so they don't fly right out and not realize they're somewhere else. Um, and then I know, so that, that cell was probably at day five. It looked pretty close to being capped, but it wasn't quite capped. So... I know, all right, day five, got another 10, 11 days before emerging will happen. Um, so I'm gonna make a note to check back in two weeks. So 13, 14 days, I'm gonna check back. I wanna make sure that cell, that queen emerged, the virgin queen emerged properly, make sure there's a good chew out. Um, I'm not gonna try to look for her too much. I just wanna make sure there was an emergence happened and then I'll close it up and come back at the, about another 10 days after that and see, uh, see how they're looking and if she's made it super super easy i build up these three frames once the queen gets mated i move them over into a five frame nuke and like i mean you can really build a, a hive very quickly hey so it's uh about two weeks later it's it's today it's april 27th um i did the first install i think i said i did this on april 12th uh since then we filled up the other two queen castle chambers uh, but I'm gonna check in and see what's going on with the uh, with the first one that we did, and hopefully we're seeing some fresh eggs. I mean, that's the name of the game. Let's check it out. It's a little chillier than I would like it to be right now. So bees aren't quite flying. It's still the morning. But sun's popping out, taking all their syrup. 
as expected. Good amount of bees. So this was just the straight up empty frame that I had put in before. And it doesn't look like they're doing much with this. Would have hoped to see some eggs on that bad boy. This was a frame that had emerging, that had brood emerging. So they've taken a lot of syrup and stored it in this frame. So you're just seeing stores. On quick glance, no signs of a queen. Queen finding is one of my favorite activities. Hopefully we get to do that. And this was the frame that had the cell on it. So like, we're hoping we see... Oh, I see a virgin queen. We got a virgin queen, whoop. So, super small, but there she is, Virgin Queen, right here. You can find a virgin, they, they tend to, they tend to um, be a little more sporadic with their walking and they just kind of walk around a lot, look like they're not really doing anything. Um, also their, whatever that like, you know, dot on their shoulders is called on their, what's that, their thorax, uh, it's not fuzzy, it's shiny, so you can look for that shiny thorax and then you know she's got a little bit different of a abdomen but there she is looking beautiful she will go get mated hopefully here soon and then she's gonna look a lot more plump so i'm gonna go ahead and just put her back no big deal we, we know we have a virgin queen i'm gonna make that note and i'll come back i'm gonna give her a week i'll come back in a week and uh and see what we got because these like nighttime temps have gotten into the low 30s, I'm gonna make sure to keep those two frames that have a lot have more activity. I'm gonna keep them together. All right, that's it. Pretty easy. Uh, we've had really great success with uh, with queen castles, and I, I hope you learned something. My wife and I, Kara Jo, we have uh, a podcast called Mind Your Hives Beekeeping, where we're talking about the things that we're doing. Uh, we have a YouTube page. Don't put a ton of stuff on it just because editing videos takes forever and I'm not that tech savvy. Um, we have uh, Cara Jo Skincare and Bee Farm. We have an organic skincare company um, that we are utilizing our apiary. So we're, you know, honey, beeswax, propolis, and skincare products. Um, Cara is an absolute wizard growing herbs and fusing them into products. They're so good. Check them out. Um, everything is available online at carajoskincare.com. Uh, I hope I can figure out how to put a link right now on this. And uh, yeah, if you have questions, um, mindyourhives at gmail.com. Feel free to email us. We take a lot of those questions. We'll talk about them on the podcast, but we're always happy to help. We're always learning. We hope you are always learning and we can all get better at beekeeping together. Cheers, y'all.